Today we're going to take a look at removing the carburetor on this Murray 22 inch, six and a quarter horsepower quantum engine. The tools you're going to need are a Phillips screwdriver, a 3 8 socket, and a 5 16 socket. I like to use a pair of vice grips to clamp off the fuel line. We'll start out by removing this cover right here, and then we'll remove the air filter. You want to remove this because it is attached to the top of the air filter housing. Let me check, make sure you can see that. Yes, you can. So now we get our 5 16 and we remove the front cover to the air filter. This particular one you can use a straight slot screwdriver or a 5 16 Pull your air cleaner and the cover off. Now we've got three 5 16 bolts. One right here that holds it to the governor housing and two right here that hold it to the carburetor. We'll remove those. Sorry if my hand's blocking the view here. Then we removed the backing for the air cleaner housing. There's a line right here, creates air pressure, and that attaches right there, that just pulls right off. Now we'll take a pair of vice grips and we'll clamp off our fuel line because there is gas in it and we don't want the gas to leak everywhere. And we'll proceed to remove the clip right here on the fuel line. And then remove the fuel line itself. Might be a little leakage there, but not much. Now our next step is to go in on this particular engine. It's a 3 8 socket. And there are two 3 8 bolts to remove this carburetor. One here and one back here. Very hard to see. There's one of the bolts. Here's the other one. You want to support the carburetor when you take the second one out. You don't want to overstress the linkage or the governor spray. And then you'll very carefully, because this is a Z-Bend linkage right here, very carefully you'll tip the carburetor and work it until it comes off the Z-Bend. And that's how you remove the carburetor on a Quantum Briggs and Stratton. And All right, one of the first things we want to do is get our bowl nut off. On the Briggs and Stratton, this bowl nut is a jet. So we'll take this off. We'll examine the washer, make sure there's no cracks or tears in the washer. That's good. We'll look down inside the bowl, that's looking pretty bad. Spray a little carb cleaner down in here. See how that works out. Get a shop towel. We'll just get in there and wipe out any debris that might be in there. Then we're going to examine our bowl nut very carefully. It's got a hole that goes all the way through one side to the other and then there's an opening right there. Now I like to use torch tip cleaners. You can usually get those at your large home box stores or any welding supply shop. If you don't happen to have that available, some fishing line will work. You want to be very, very careful. Anything that you put through these holes, you don't want to 
mess the hole up. You don't want to enlarge the hole. That's why a lot of times people recommend fishing line, something soft and easy to use. So we'll go in through here. We'll check that. We'll go down inside here. Appears to be obstructed. So we'll have to take a little bit of carb cleaner and clean that out. We'll let that soak for a moment. What happens is that bowl nut is attached right here. Fuel will come through this slot. It will enter the side holes. It will go up through the center. goes up here into the emulsion tube. The emulsion tube see if I can get this angle where you can see it. It's right here in front of the butterfly and this is where the vaporized fuel and air mixed together as they go into the carburetor. So let's see how this is doing real quick. We'll try a smaller tip. Try the smallest one first. That one goes through. Try the next size. That one makes it. there we go usually when you do this you can look through it see if I can hold this and you can see when the tip cleaner passes all the way through I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not but so anyway our next step after this is to take our float off Usually you can get them with your fingertips, a pair of needle nose pliers, go ahead and slip that pin out. I usually put the small parts in the bowl and then carefully lift this out. This is your float and your needle valve. I'm going to go ahead and remove that needle valve. We're going to shake the float. Don't hear any gas inside of it which means that is not leaking. Most of your carburetors down inside here are going to have a rubber seat. It's the valve seat. Now you can take a number four crochet hook, you can take a, a paper clip and just bend a little hook on the end of it like this tool here. I'm going to reach down inside the hole and pull it out. These valve seats have a groove on one side and the other side is flat. When you go to reassemble these you want the groove going down inside the carburetor and the flat going on the outside. But you want to remove as much rubber items as you possibly can before you start cleaning this carburetor because carburetor cleaner will destroy the rubber. So we'll set those aside. Now we'll take a little carb cleaner we'll shoot it up through the emulsion tube see it spraying through there. Got a little bit of corrosion on this Welch plug. It's nothing to worry about but I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a scrub there. Can't really get to it. We'll take some carb cleaner, shoot it up through here. You see it coming out the Welch plug. And we'll check out our fuel inlet. Going through the carburetor, spray that, keep seeing this yellow coming out of here, that yellow is bad gas, so, but you can't leave the gas setting in it, if it's in there more than a month, 
it can ruin things. What happens is, is the ethanol in today's gas draws moisture right out of the atmosphere. It deposits it as water inside the gas. And it creates an acid, which as you can see here, is corroding the aluminum. All right, once everything's been cleaned, we'll take our compressed air. And blow everything out. Then we would proceed to take the parts in our rebuild kit. I don't have one here today, so we're just going to reuse the old parts. And the first thing we want to do is we want to put the seat for the needle valve back in. So remember, as I said, the seat has a groove, and the groove goes down inside the carburetor. Get that down there the best you can. Push it all the way in. Usually a quarter inch drill bit will do just fine. All right, so to reassemble, we've put our seat in. Take about a quarter inch drill bit. Make sure it's seated properly all the way down. Take our needle valve, hang it just like that, ever so carefully set that in there. And we take our hinge pin, doesn't matter what side you start, we just work our hinge pin through, should slip right in. At that point in time we're going to take a bowl gasket place that all the way around the bowl. Now when you get your kit you want to look at your carburetor before you put it, the kit in it and you want to make sure some of them have the wider bowl gaskets here and some of them have narrow ones. You need to make sure that you've got what you need. Then your float bowl goes over the top. We take our bowl nut gasket, put that on <clears throat> And we will tighten this down. Once we've got that tight, snug it up with a ratchet, snug it up with a combination wrench if you want. This particular one, it is a half inch. And that's it. To reinstall the carburetor on the Briggs Quantum Engine, it's pretty much the reverse of how we took it off. You want to make sure that this o-ring right here is in good shape. Then you want to take your carburetor, there's only one hole here, take your linkage and gently insert the linkage, it's a z-bend, wiggle that around Place your carburetor there, take your two bolts, and get those started. The bolts on this particular model happen to be 3 8 And tighten. Make sure this tube is in its correct place. We're then going to take the 
back housing for the air cleaner. That tube goes in right here. We're going to insert the tube. There are three bolts that hold the air cleaner on. They're five sixteenths. We'll find the first one. That goes in the upper corner there. And that's just more or less to hold it in place. And we'll take our next two bolts. Get that one started. Get this one started. I'm going to make sure the gasket's in good shape and that these bolts are going through the gasket and creating a nice firm seal. The primer on this particular engine works off of air pressure. It doesn't move fuel. It creates an air pressure into the bowl of the carburetor which forces fuel through the jet in the bowl nut and up to the emulsion tube. At that point we're going to take our fuel line here go ahead and reinstall that on top of the carburetor get our vice grips off of there and we'll put our clip in place All right, we've got our fuel line attached. We've got our air cleaner base on. As you can see down through here, fuel line is clipped. The linkage is hooked up. Springs are in good shape. So all we have to do now is put our air cleaner and our top cover back on. Place our air cleaner in there. Five sixteenths nut that holds this on, and our top cover here is held on with a Phillips screw. And there we go, all set. Thanks for watching.